Hi everybody, Vigorous Rapscallion here with another quick tutorial video. Today we're going to be going over the Rotator Gizmo and the new Wave Chip. Let's start with the Rotator Gizmo. It's very similar to the Piston, so this shouldn't take too long for us to demonstrate. Just going to put that in front of you. Um, and let's take a look at its connection. So it's got its one standard Gizmo connector at the top. Then it's got an on-off state, just like the piston, and this time our speed's in RPM. First, let's get it hooked up. So this is our little rotating platform. Now that it's attached, it's going to move relative to that as its center axis. Once it starts moving, it's just going to rotate around here. We'll see that in action in just a second. So uh, let's go ahead and get our variable in front of us and take a look at how RPM differs from meters per second. Uh, RPM is revolutions per minute, so instead that's how long it's going to take for that object to make its way around its center axis once. So let's start out by putting one, that should have it moving pretty slow. We're also going to use this one to uh, turn the thing on. So now it's in its on state, we've got a one coming into the on off switch. And we've also got a 1 going into RPM. So you can see that is pretty slow. It's going to take an entire minute to go around there. However, if that object was further out, it'd be moving at a greater velocity. Velocity, It would just still take a minute to get around. Uh, so let's go ahead and see what happens when we change that. Let's say we want it to rotate once every second. Well, that's pretty easy. Uh, instead, we're going to want 60 revolutions per minute if you're just channel your inner GoGo -Go Bordello fan for a second. There you go. That is my regular speed. Um, and then we need to hook that up because it's still hooked up to the red signal. So let's grab our RPM signal and see what happens now. Now we've got the thing moving pretty dang fast once around every second. 1, 1,000, 2, 1,000, 3, 1,000. There you go. It's moving a little fast for me to grab, so I'm just going to go ahead and change that in settings. And let's get this thing not moving again. There we go. Great. Okay, so uh, what happens if we change a few things about the system? You can see when you grab this, it's just going to grab everything that you have hooked, hooked up to it and move it relative to that. So keep that in mind. And if, say, you like put it on its side, that is going to change the axis of rotation. So now let's turn it back on again. Let's put it up to like 10. There we go. So now it should take about six seconds to get around. And you can see, since it's tilted, the axis of rotation has changed, and uh, it's going to just go relative to the rotator. So you can also use this in like a Ferris wheel setup, that sort of thing. Uh, let's go on to the wave chip and see what we can do with that and how we can take that chip and put it into this system and make some interesting things happen. All right, so let's get that wave chip in front of us and see what that's doing. So it looks like we've got three inputs here. We've got three or one output. Let's grab an output chip so we can see what's happening, and let's grab a variable so that we can input some values into here. There we go, there's our variable chip. And let's grab our connector tool and see what's going on with this guy. So it looks like we've got a signal value, that sounds like what we want for our output. On off is going to be binary, cycle duration in seconds and amplitude. So it's a simple wave function, so the cycle duration is just going to be how long it takes for one wave to sort of go through. Uh, amplitude is going to be both the highest and the lowest value that the wave will go through. Let's demonstrate that really quickly. So let's say, let's just turn it on, and then let's say we want it to take four seconds to execute a cycle. We want it to cycle between negative six and six. So that's our amplitude, six. That's our cycle duration, four seconds. And then we turn it on. And there you go. It's moving between those two values in a sine wave function. But we don't have to use that. We've got a whole bunch of different functions here. Uh, and we can also uh, change the period input units if you want a little more precision there. Uh, but for now, we're just going to leave it on seconds. So if you want to know how sine and cosine work more in depth, how those waves actually work, that's kind of outside the scope of this video. So go ahead and check out like Khan Academy or something like that. They have some really good videos up. But the other ones I'm going to go over. So the square wave is just going to go between the two most extreme values, the edges of the amplitude, which you can see echoed in the wave. It just kind of sits at one for one cycle and then goes to the other. So that's good as a switching gate. You could use that to make a piston go up and down, you know, things like that. Uh, let's look at the triangle wave. Triangle wave is similar to the sine and cosine, but it's going to give every value sort of the same amount of, uh, of space. So it doesn't pause for any longer on any given value. It just shoots to the lowest, shoots straight back to the highest. 
without uh, all in uh, tenth or uh, all related to how long your cycle duration is there. So um, that one works a little different than sine and cosine. So keep that in mind. Sawtooth is the last one we're going to go over. This one just takes the cycle duration to get up to its highest value and then shoots down to the lowest value. You can see that echoed in the circuit diagram here. Uh, so that's all well and good. Those are fun to look at, but they're not really doing anything. Let's hook them up to a rotator so we can see what's going on. And uh, first, let's go ahead and multiply these values because they're on the low side for an RPM setting. So uh, I just want to multiply all of them. First, let's set that up as a multiplier chip just so that things are a little easier to observe. Let's grab that. So now we're going to be multiplying this input by 6. And we also want that to be our output chip now. Okay. So, let's see here. First, let's get our output in the field of view for this little setup. Let's grab our sawtooth chip here. There we go. So now it's going between those settings in a sawtooth pattern. And let's see what that actually looks like when the thing's moving. We're just going to grab our on from that same variable there. We're going to hook that up as well. Oh, whoops, I forgot to grab. The uh, reason it's moving so slow is I forgot to grab from the combinator. Instead, I grabbed directly from the wave chip. Grab the right one. This is the output we want. There we go. It's a little more exaggerated. So our sawtooth here, you can see it's shooting up to its highest value and then going right back to its lowest value. Let's go ahead and see triangle. You can see it just sort of goes between the two values and it slows down on either side because there's, you know, uh, smaller values going through. If you do square tooth, though, it's just going to go at the highest or lowest value for the designated cycle time. Uh, and then sine and cosine are going to be similar to triangle, but they're just going to sort of look a little bit smoother and have slightly different effects. So you can experiment with that for like basic things like this, or if you'd like to know more about how these things fit into more complex programming, I'd look up some tutorials on that. I might go into that a little bit in later videos, but uh, for the basic ones, I'm not going to touch on that yet. Uh, once again, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and have a nice day.